Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace Morocco's Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation and Moroccan expatriates Nasser Breita upon his visit to the kingdom to participate in the fifth session of the Bahrain-Morocco Joint Higher Committee. His Majesty the King affirmed pride in the historic relations between Bahrain and Morocco, their leaderships and people, as well as the keenness to continuously enhance them in all fields. The Minister conveyed to His Majesty the greetings of His Majesty King Mohammed VI and his wishes of continued progress and development to Bahrain and its people. His Majesty welcomed the Moroccan Minister and asked him to convey his greetings to the Moroccan monarch and his wishes of further progress and prosperity to Morocco and its people. His Majesty praised the efforts of the Moroccan monarch in developing relations between the two kingdoms, noting the high level they have reached. His Majesty hailed the results of the joint committee meeting in terms of promoting paths of fruitful cooperation, joint action and mutual coordination for the benefit and development of the two countries and people. For his part, the Moroccan minister expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for the warm reception and hospitality and His Majesty's keenness to strengthen brotherly relations, stressing that the Bahraini-Moroccan relations always enjoy the support of both countries' leaders. A telephone call was held between His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. His Royal Highness conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the Qatari Emir and His Majesty's best wishes for further progress and prosperity to Qatar. He highlighted the brotherly relations that unite both countries and their peoples and emphasized the importance of joint efforts to resolve all outstanding issues to achieve the common aspirations shared between the citizens of both countries and to preserve the cohesion of the GCC as well as regional security and stability. It was also agreed that officials from both countries will continue to communicate to achieve common goals. On behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa inaugurated the King Hamad American Mission Hospital KHAMH in Ali. His Royal Highness highlighted His Majesty the King's unwavering support of development projects that enhance the Kingdom's economic competitiveness and benefit citizens and residents. He emphasized the importance of the healthcare sector and its key role in the Kingdom's overall development. His Royal Highness noted the newly established hospital as an extension of the long-standing Bahrain-U.S. partnership and emphasized the American Mission Hospital's over 120-year-long legacy as one of the first hospitals in the region. Since its opening in the Kingdom of Bahrain in January 26, 1903, which coincides with the opening of the KHA image. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of quality and efficiency in achieving development plans that benefit citizens and noted that investing in sustainable health care services continues to be a top priority. He emphasized the role of strategic partnerships with the private sector, particularly in advancing the Kingdom's national development. He noted how these partnerships have expedited the implementation of various priorities within the Economic Recovery Plan, greatly improving the quality of services presented to Bahraini citizens. To mark the inauguration of ho the hospital, His Royal Highness unveiled a commemorative plaque and toured various departments where he was briefed on the medical services provided by the hospital. He commended the AMH efforts in broadening accessibility and advancing medical services available to citizens and residents. The CEO and medical director of the American Mission Hospital, Dr. George Cherian, expressed his gratitude and appreciation to His Royal Highness for inaugurating the KHA image. Dr. Cherian indicated that KHA image was designed to provide modern and integrated medical treatment services in line with the Kingdom's ambitions for the healthcare sector. 
Dr. Cherian emphasized the AMH's commitment to further its partnerships and ensure the ongoing provision of comprehensive health services, adding that the hospital is equipped with the latest laboratories, simulation rooms, medical facilities, a library, a lecture hall. The newly established hospital provides a wide range of health care services and contains 125 beds, a ward for women and children, and a ward for various surgical medical specialties. It also provides operating rooms, intensive care units, a dialysis unit consisting of 20 beds, a laboratory and radiology center with the latest technology and medical devices. A number of senior government officials from Bahrain and the world also attended the inauguration. The National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa received member of the British House of Lords, Lord Stuart Pollack. His Highness praised the strong Bahraini-British relations throughout history and the development witnessed by these relations at various levels. He stressed the mutual keenness to develop relations at all levels to serve the common goals of the two countries and peoples. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Ayman Lim Ayyad, and the Minister of Youth Affairs, Rawan Ta Najib Tawfiqi, in the presence of GSA Vice Chairman, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and GSA CEO, Dr. Abdul Rahman Asker. His Highness affirmed that Bahraini sports are on the path of development and success thanks to the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He congratulated Lim Ayyad on the issuance of the Royal Decree appointing him as Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports. His Highness stressed the importance of concerted efforts, integration and coordination between the SCYS, the Ministry of Youth Affairs and other sports bodies to advance the youth and sports sectors. He pointed out the importance of building on what has been achieved under the leadership of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, by drawing up general policies and plans for the youth and sports sectors in order to achieve more gains. His Highness wished him success in achieving the aspirations of the leadership to further develop this sector. Al Ayyad and Tawfiqi expressed thanks and appreciation for the interest that His Highness attaches to the youth and sports sectors, which led to many achievements that contributed to the development of this sector and raised the name of the kingdom in various external forums. 
the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Chairman and the Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Delegation, Ahmed Lim Salam, chaired a meeting with diplomatic missions in the presence of Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh. The meeting was devoted to reviewing the Kingdom's preparations to host the 146th Assembly of the Inter-Parliamentary Union in March. Lim Salam welcomed the ambassadors to the House of the People, which is one of the results of the pioneering reform project launched by His Majesty the King within the state of law and institutions, which is based on solid constitutional foundations, paving the way for a steadily progressing democratic process that has earned the kingdom local and international recognition. He asserted that the kingdom's hosting of the 146th IPU Assembly is a global vote of confidence in the kingdom's distinguished ability to organize mega global conferences and events. Saleh expressed pride in the global trust in the kingdom's ability to host the mega parliamentary gathering, confirming the prestigious status reached by the kingdom's comprehensive development and democratic process led by His Majesty the King and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rajah bin Abdullah Al Khalifa delivered a speech marking the International Customs Day. The Minister affirmed that customs affairs is one of the most important active lines in the Ministry of Interior security strategy by employing modern technologies and protecting borders, developing customs capacities, facilitating travel and trade, and protecting society. In line with the goals of the National March led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and with the follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He noted that maintaining security and protecting public safety takes place within multiple contexts, including coordination between security services and customs affairs, with the aim of enhancing border security and ports and taking precautionary measures to reduce smuggling and risks. General Sheikh Rashid added that the total number of violations seized by customs affairs during 2022 reached 6,230, an increase of 31% over the previous year, which reflects the efficiency of national capacities. The minister indicated that continuing to aspire for the best remains an important matter in overcoming obstacles and providing highly efficient services through the expansion of digital transformation and harnessing all capabilities in the development proce processes. He expressed thanks and appreciation to all Customs Affairs employees praising their efficiency, discipline and performance. The Joint Higher Ministerial Committee between Bahrain and Morocco held its fifth session, chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation, and Moroccans Abroad, Nasser Breita. Dr. Zayani delivered a speech in which he welcomed the visit of the Moroccan counterpart and the accompanying delegation to participate in the fifth ministerial meeting of the Joint Higher Committee between the two brotherly countries within the framework of the two countries' keenness and common interests in strengthening the bonds of the distinguished historical brotherly relations in line with the keenness of his Majesty the King and the Moroccan King, with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Dr. Zayani stressed that this meeting affirms the common desire of the two brotherly countries to develop and enhance bilateral cooperation in all areas, including cooperation between the two ministries in the political and diplomatic fields, and establishing a regulatory framework and joint mechanisms to intensify consultations, exchange visits, and unify positions. The Moroccan Minister praised the distinguished relations and joint cooperation with the support and guidance of their Majesties, expressed Expressing the praise and appreciation of the Moroccan leadership for Bahrain's order from His Majesty the King to establish a consulate general for Bahrain in the city of Al Ayoun. He praised the development and progress of the joint cooperation relations, stressing the importance of joint work and efforts to develop bilateral cooperation and joint coordination. At the end of the meeting, the two ministers signed a number of MOUs to enhance cooperation in the fields of industry, trade, consumer protection and standards, in addition to executive programs in the fields of handicrafts, endowments and Islamic affairs, and a framework for cooperation in the field of space activities for peaceful purposes. They also signed the minutes of the joint committee meeting, expressing their aspiration to develop and strengthen brotherly relations and bilateral cooperation to achieve the common goals and interests of the two brotherly countries and people, and a joint statement was issued in this regard. Morocco's Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation and Moroccan expatriates Nasser Breita arrived in Bahrain to participate in the fifth session of the Bahrain-Morocco Joint Higher Committee. He was welcomed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, Bahrain's Ambassador to Morocco, Khalid bin Salman Limsallam, Morocco's Ambassador to Bahrain, Mustafa bin Khayi, and Senior Ministry of Foreign Affairs officials. The oil and gas holding company Noga Holding announced partnering with Hope Ventures, the investment arm of Hope Fund, and 
producers of the entrepreneurship themed reality television show Bibon and Bahrain's Electricity and Water Authority to make Bibon the first TV show 100% powered by renewable energy. Bibon TV show results, revolves around entrepreneurs pitching their businesses before a panel of regional investors for investment and strategic business opportunities. Hope Fund Chairman Ayman Lim Ayyad said that Bibon plays a key role in facilitating investment opportunities for promising businesses, which creates an impact that encourages entrepreneurship as a viable path with the purpose of diversifying Bahrain's national economy. EWA President Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed affirmed that EWA welcomes the creative youth energies in all fields that focus on developing renewable energy sources in line with the economic goals of Bahrain Vision 2030. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Daina, received the Secretary General of the Organization Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries, Ali Sept. The meeting came on the sidelines of the Middle East Energy and Sustainability Forum 2023, where Dr. bin Daina praised the great role played by the organization in enhancing aspects of cooperation among members of the organization. The minister stressed Bahrain's keenness on bolstering partnership and cooperation between all organizations and associations specialized in the oil sector with the aim of exchanging experiences and finding investment opportunities to advance the economy. The meeting reviewed topics of common interest and discussing the latest developments in various oil and environmental fields, especially those related to climate change. The Secretary General expressed admiration for the development projects in the oil sector and the environmental initiatives implemented by Bahrain. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Nawaf al maouda met with UAE Justice Minister Abdullah bin Sultan al naimi al maouda hailed the deep-rooted historic relations binding Bahrain and the UAE, led by His Majesty the King and the UAE President. He noted the advanced level of joint cooperation and coordination between both ministries. The two sides reviewed ways of exchanging expertise and practices, focusing on joint judicial cooperation to support development projects, especially digital transformation applications. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramihi, visited the Sheikh Zayed housing project at the UAE, where she met with the head of the project, Mohammed Al Mansouri, and a number of officials. The minister praised the bilateral relations and hailed the outcomes of the project in meeting citizens' needs. She highlighted the Ministry of Housing's projects of Bahrain that offers social housing for citizens, which are being implemented following royal directives in partnership with the private sector, which is part of the government program 2023-2026. Al Mansouri praised the kingdom's efforts in providing housing services to citizens and affirmed keenness to further enhance the bilateral cooperation to exchange experiences and develop housing services. Bahrain is launching the Declaration of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the Italian capital Rome, which is a document that expresses the thought and philosophy of His Majesty the King. The declaration includes a number of principles that constitute a pillar of coexistence as an approach to peace in the world. The chairman of the board of trustees of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, Dr. Sheikh Khaled bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, said that the declaration, which was written by His Majesty, stems from historical foundations about coexistence in Bahrain and the religious approach. He affirmed that the launch constitutes an important stage to teach the international community of the importance of what the document contains, reflecting the Bahraini model of peaceful coexistence. He also said that the declaration was praised by His Holiness Pope Francis during his historic visit to Bahrain in November, during which he stressed that it is an important document for respect for human rights and dialogue. He called for the need to preserve the authenticity of people's beliefs, stressing that the continuation of humanity and its peaceful coexistence are linked to the free freedom of to practice faith. On the sidelines of the inauguration of the Declaration of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Rome under the title Understanding Religions and New Challenges for Education, a number of topics were discussed in the field of education and peaceful coexistence to convey Bahrain's approach to participants from around the world. Here today with students from all over, all over the world, we want to uh, move from theory from the speeches of the leaders uh, from the contents that have been suggested by these relevant uh, people in religion politics uh, during uh, last year uh, in order to move to project and to understand how to realize projects projects of peace 
the cooperation between my university and uh, uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain is improving and developing programs related to understanding religions. This is one of the uh, most important calls that uh, also Pope Francis underlined during his speech in Bahrain, uh, since he, is, he explained that education is one of the key of the future. Here in Rome we are invited to discuss ignorance uh, as a, a kind of handicap for education. So we hope that these uh, young people that come here today will get a very good experience on the uh, peaceful coexistence. This uh, put Bahrain in a very good uh, place to show uh, to foreigners the understanding that they have of the world. Well, I work for Faith in Leadership, which gives uh, effect to a big idea, which is that ignorance is the enemy of peace. And we do that by delivering on a particular vision that His Majesty had to train and equip the young people of Bahrain in the field of leadership so that they could actually live and work and flourish uh, in between their different communities. The results are there to be seen. They're here at this conference running it. They can talk to people of any different uh, culture or background. They can think laterally. They know how to lead meetings. On the occasion of the 74th Republic Day of India, Ambassador Piyush Srivastava unfurled the national flag at the embassy. More than 1,000 members of the Indian community, including representatives of Indian community associations, Indian schools, Indian professionals, workers and students took part in the ceremony. Indian Community Relief Fund Bulletin highlighting their activities of the past year was also released by the Ambassador Sri Vastava. The students and band from the Indian schools in Bahrain rendered the national anthem during the solemn occasion. It's a great day in the history of our nation. It is the day when India was, Republic of India was established when our constitution was adopted in 1950. We all Indians at home and abroad celebrate this joy with great sense of pride and fervor. What a better place to celebrate this. I am in Bahrain, we all consider very fortunate and lucky to be in this beautiful kingdom. And celebrating this national day is also an occasion where we rededicate ourselves to further diversify and deepen our already strong historical and deep-rooted bonds of friendship. Our community here is dynamic, it's diverse, represents uh, our vibrant, India's vibrant culture and diversity. And they have been a key link in our bilateral ties in contributing to the development of this kingdom. And they have, done, uh, they have done well in Bahrain, both at professional and personal level, thanks to Kingdom's policies of harmony and peaceful coexistence. I also take this opportunity to express thanks and gratitude to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the government and people of Bahrain for their warmth, care and affection. The head of the execution prosecution, Mohammed Lamsalam, stated that the operation to re-release the dolphins in their natural marine environment, which was carried out with the joint efforts of the public prosecution, the Coast Guard and the Supreme Council for the Environment, in cooperation with the International Fund for Animal Welfare, is the first operation of its kind in the kingdom. More in this report. Within the framework of the concern and keenness of the Attorney General, Dr. Ali bin Fadl al to implement the final rulings issued in criminal cases in a manner that coincides with the validity of the law and is consistent with the Kingdom of Bahrain's regional and international treaties, the first criminal ruling of its kind was implemented by re-releasing dolphins in their natural marine environment, which was carried out by joint efforts between the Public Prosecution, the Coast Guard, and the Supreme Council for the Environment, in cooperation with the International Fund for Animal Welfare. We are Tales Veterinary Center, the medical team participating in this case. We have performed several screening tests for the dolphins. We did the blood test, the ultrasound, as well as the sputum tests for the dolphins. We have also assisted Alfao in uh, tagging and releasing the dolphins into the Bahraini waters. 
Um, we are proud to be uh, to have the trust of the Supreme Council for Environment, as we have previously worked on several cases before, and for turtles, birds, birds of prey, and now the dolphins. We are happy to be part of this team as we have complete as we complete each other, um, and we are, we'd like to appreciate the work of Supreme Council for Environment, International Fund for Animal Welfare, Ministry of Interior, uh, Coast Guard, and Civil Defense. The defendants were convicted of hunting prohibited dolphins and were fined, and the boat used for fishing was confiscated, and the dolphins were returned to their natural habitats to protect them from extinction. The implementation of this ruling stems from the Kingdom of Bahrain's interest in the environment and wildlife, in terms of its issuance of many advanced legislations and laws that keep pace with the latest international legislation in the field of preserving the environment and wildlife. And to speak more about the matter, we have with us on the phone Public Prosecutor Mr. Abdullah Abdel Rida. Hello Mr. Abdullah, can you tell us more about this step and how it reflects Bahrain's commitment to regional and international treaties? Uh, good evening and actually thank you for this opportunity to explain that within the framework of His Excellency the Attorney General, Dr. Ali bin Fadl al in keen interest to execute the final rulings issued in criminal cases. The first criminal ruling of its kind has been enforced by re-releasing re dolphins in their natural marine environment. The ruling conformed with the law and Bahrain's regional and international obligations. It was carried out with joint efforts between the public prosecution, the general administration of Coastal Guard, and the Supreme Council for the Environment in cooperation with the International Fund for Animal Welfare. And to tell you more about the case where the defendants were actually accused of illegally hunting dolphins and therefore convicted and fined. Also, the fishing boat was confiscated and the dolphins have been returned to their natural habitat and a protection from extinction. Therefore, the execution of this ruling steams from the Bahrain, from the Kingdom of Bahrain's interest in the environment and the wildlife. Public Prosecutor Mr. Abdullah Abdel Rada, thank you for joining us.